Hi guys, Beth here from The Friendly Groomer, and of course you guys all know Abby, and then we have a special guest today with us, Allison Graham, and, and Mr. Winston over there. Winston, who's so ready to have his hair groomed, or his fur groomed, <laughs> hello. We've been getting a lot of questions from everybody about just tips for grooming at home, and to be honest with you, this was something we were very reluctant to put out there, because we are worried about um, just injuries happening from home grooming uh, but we do also realize that a lot of people don't have a choice right now and they are grooming so we thought why not do um, just a video so everyone can sort of get some tips from Abby now none of our groomers actually have dogs with long hair which is why Allison is here <laughs> so we're gonna do something a little different today Abby is actually gonna try to talk Allison through the groom um, and if you hear the background noise, that's all coming from me. It's Dylan. He says hi. <laughs> yeah, Abby, I think, why don't you go through, start next with going through your agenda of things because um, Abby wanted to talk a bit about just the prep beforehand. Like Allison, you were yeah. saying you weren't, didn't realize even that yeah. you, know, you needed to wash the dog first and the tools. And then... Um, yeah, I have my tools right here. I can show them. Um, so for our agenda today, the first thing that I wanted to go over is the overview of tools that you'll need, or some of them are optional. Um, since for most people, it'll just sort of be like a basic at-home haircut. You don't need to get super fancy or anything. Um, then we're going to talk about some prep work and safety tips for grooming at home. Allison will do the groom for Winston and I'll talk her through it and whatnot. And then we'll go over any like extra details and kind of finishing up touches, that kind of thing. Awesome. So the basic overview for tools, um, depending on your dog's coat type, some of these things might change a little bit or what kind of length you're looking to do for your dog. If you just want to do like a straight up buzz down, just super simple, um, that's a little bit easier but I know that Winston usually gets a little bit of a longer haircut. So the first thing that you'll need is a clipper of some kind. Allison's got hers there. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a dog hair clipper. You can use human hair clippers too, but the blade lengths are different between humans and dogs. So if you do have human supplies, the blade numbers might be a little bit different. So your mileage may vary with that. Smaller dog, you can also use a smaller clipper. So this is just like a mini cordless clipper. We use it at work for kind of little detail work and stuff. But um, if you do have a smaller dog, it's not as powerful as the bigger ones, but you can use that depending on their coat if it's not too thick. So you have your clipper, right, Allison? I do. So I got one and this one has a size 10 blade on it. Okay, that's fine. And they gave me a 3F as well. Okay, so the 3F is it's about equivalent to like a half inch or so. Yeah, about that. Yeah, so um, you can use that blade if you like or did you get any of the attachments that go on? The, uh, well, the old well? one <laughs> that broke okay. uh, came with a plethora Okay, the plastic ones. Yeah, um, I've got angles. Okay, <laughs> I've got I've got more than I ever know what to do with. So okay. <laughs> you tell me which one we want to use because we could use any of them. I mean, you can probably go with the with the uh, blade. Like the okay, three. um, like I said, that's about equivalent to like a half inch between like a half and a three eighths of an inch or so. Okay. Um, so it's actually one of the longest blades that they make. So it works for what you're you're looking for for him. Um, let's see. Ooh. Let's see. If you do have one of the smaller clippers and that's all you have, you can also get attachments specifically for these ones that just slide on. Um, so you can make it a little longer as well. But other than that, you will want to have a brush of some kind. So like a slicker brush, which you probably already have if you're brushing your dog at home. So I have two kinds. I have I this know. one, which is like a bristle that you then yeah. like pop out. Okay. <laughs> the hair, a little bit yeah. like that. And then I also have this one, which has a bit of a... Okay. So that one that you're holding is at work, we call it the comb with knives. <laughs> I agree it is the comb with knives. It yeah, has it's a comb with knives. knives it's it. extremely sharp. We've all cut ourselves multiple times with those. I They're feel like mostly used crew. for breaking up mats. Okay. So... I wouldn't necessarily recommend using them at home. Um, 
personally, I would rather that people just go underneath with a blade, like underneath any mats. Okay. Those are good for, let's say they have like one mat in their tail or something, then you can use that to kind of get it out. Okay. Um, but for the most part, you just kind of need like a basic slicker brush. And then if you do have a comb as well, like a metal comb, then that can also help. You don't necessarily need it, but it does help to kind of get the details a little bit better. Okay. Um, nail clippers. These are my little ones. So I bought, or I, I've had these for years. I'm scared okay. to, get to use them. So you're going to teach me. They do have okay. a dog on them. <laughs> yeah, just depending on the size of your dog, little or big, you can look at our Facebook for our, our um, nail trimming tutorial as well. Okay. And good. then as far as scissors go, it it's like I said, for a home groom, it's not a huge deal. You don't have to get like crazy fancy or anything. Um, as long as you just have like kind of a basic pair of scissors, they don't have to be grooming shears. And if you have or want to use a pair of thinning shears, then those can help as well. But once again, you don't have to go like super crazy um, if you're just doing a super basic haircut. If you do want to do stuff around the face, it does help to have a shorter pair of scissors because if you have like a super long pair, you're trying to trim up their little face, it can be kind of crazy. <laughs> Abby, can I yeah. ask a question? Yeah. Um, so some of our clients we know we've been getting some pretty you know distressed voicemails and things like that and we know that their dogs are in um pretty tough condition they definitely have a lot of mats yeah. now if they wanted to skip all the detail work and scissor work you know i know maybe this is a bad comparison but you know i gave dylan a buzz cut with all of his hair when this started can we yeah. do the same for their dogs just to keep their skin comfortable and healthy like can yeah they yeah the trimming and, and all that yeah for sure like i said um if you want to just go with like a straight up buzz cut it's a lot easier it's a lot safer as well um if they do have a lot of mats then that's what i would recommend for sure and the best blade length for that is a seven um and you should get a seven f as opposed to there's like skip tooth versus finishing blades it just depends on how wide the blades are between each other. It's kind of hard and, to explain, but you want to get the seven F. Well, would you, so the numbers, um, just so everyone knows, it has to do with how close it actually cuts down to their Yes, yeah, it's, it's the, just the length of the blade. And so on the different brands of blades, would mm -hmm. the number be right on there or in different places? Yep. Or are they, are they easy to find? Like, can you show us on yours maybe where yep. you find that number so they know they've got the right blade? So this is a 30. Okay, so it's cute. <laughs> And you can see on Allison's that she's got this, the three F. Okay. So you would want a seven F if you're um, buzzing your dog down. And look at this. They even actually give you a whole list of all of them. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. Okay. Yep. And show you, but what they don't show you is how to switch them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. maybe you could walk you right through that because see, there's this little yeah, thing on the so bottom. With that kind that you have, um, that little black part on the back, you push it up and okay. then you pop the blade off on the front. Like here, Allison. Yeah. So on mine, mine, mine doesn't have the black part, but you push that and then pull it this way. Oh, well, for goodness sakes, I never would have catch that. Although it's still not working. And of course I can't ask anybody to come over and do it for me. <laughs> oh, did you get it? Do I have to loosen the screws or does it like actually nope. pull? No, it's just like a separate piece. So pull. I can feel how to press like... your the black part on the back. Yeah. Like press it up. Yep. And then pop it up like this. Oh, that works that time. There okay. You go. So now I got to put the <laughs> table underneath. So to put it back on, um, right. you should have like the little metal piece on the back of your clipper that's kind of sticking out. You just slide it on and then pop it back. Oh. I was putting the same one on, so I'm not okay. delayed. Okay, I'm gonna watch you again closely. Okay, sure. So you should have um, like a little metal piece that's sticking up on the back. Yeah. So slide your blade on in the center. The internet is wonky. Every now and again, I wanna go ask my neighbors to get off of Netflix. <laughs> okay, oh, maybe it goes under. There we go. Oh, you got it? Okay, yeah. Now oh, we some, go in. Sometimes the different brands are a little bit different. For the most part, they're relatively similar, but sometimes you got to figure out how yours works. And if it won't snap on completely, sometimes you have to run the clipper for a second, kind of push it, and then it'll snap into place. Okay. 
I love that idea. It sounds so easy. That would freak me out, Abby. <laughs> I'm mean, running I'm and, in, and I'm like, oh, let me just pop that back on. No problem. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes if it's if the centerpiece that moves the blade isn't lined up, then it won't snap on right away. But if you run it for a second, just kind of push it, it'll go on. Yeah, it works. It okay, works. Okay, perfect. We did it. Awesome. Um, so like step one, assembling your yeah, step one, <laughs> figure out how to use your stuff. You know what? This is so great for people though, because if they're like me and they haven't done this, because here's the thing, we're all going to need you guys so desperately when we're allowed to come back oh, because totally our great. dogs are going to look like, you know, all the husbands look with their buzz cuts, you know, where the <laughs> holes are in their head. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Keep going. I got this. Okay, so um, next I just want to talk about the prep work a little bit. So the main thing that you've already done is you want to wash your dog first um, with dog shampoo, obviously. And then you want to fully dry your dog before you start anything. If your dog's wet, it's going to be really hard to cut their coat because um, the blade won't really go through the hair if it's wet. Uh, the reason that you want to wash them first is because if their hair is dirty, it's going to mess up your equipment. Like if there's pieces of sand and dirt and stuff in their hair. It's the same as if you try to cut sandpaper or something with your scissors, like it's just gonna dull your scissors. So that's the main reason. And then the other reason is when you dry your dog, you can kind of get a look at their skin and their hair and that sort of thing. So if they have any mats that are like hidden under there, then you'll be able to see them really easily. And then it will also separate their hair and kind of straighten it. So that makes it a little bit easier to clip them evenly as well. Um, so yeah, you've already done that. And then and if anyone other... wants to like doesn't have shampoo, um, at Village Tail, which is right by our shop, they sell one of the brands which we use, which is Earth Bath. Beautiful brand, it's fantastic, um, and also from a great little local shop, which obviously supporting local is super important right now. Yeah, absolutely sure. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about first is just safety. Um, so obviously that's like our number one priority at the salon. Um, like I said before, if your dog is matted, the best thing to do is just buzz them down, start again. Like it's hair, it'll grow back. It's a lot better to just do that than try to cut them out or anything and like risk injury. That's like our nightmare basically. <laughs> so please don't do that. Um, as far as if you're able to do like a full groom and even if you, you do have to shave them, these things all apply. So the main things to look for are there's certain areas on your dog that are kind of more prone to injury, I guess. So these are like the danger zones is what we call them. And these are just spots that while you're grooming those areas, you just want to be extra careful, essentially. Um, so I think PetSmart has like a, a little acronym that they use for it, but essentially it's, it's fairly straightforward. It's like, their eyes, their lips, um, their paw pads, the sanitary area, and like the little tuck up, like where their stomach meets their back leg, where they've got like the little flap of skin there, um, their bum, and then their hocks, which are like their heels. So on their back legs where their little leg goes down, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then the armpits as well. And then ears, of course. So basically anywhere that there's like a flap of skin of some kind. Like the entire body. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the, back. Back. <laughs> the back is easy. Start the there. back. The legs are pretty easy and everything else just got to be careful. But I mean, like I said, it's mostly just areas where there's like a flap of skin of some kind. So like the lips, the ears, just anything like that. It's just easier to cut those spots. So you just want to be really careful when you're running your blade over that area. Um... I think that's pretty much it for safety, I guess. Those are kind okay, of- so I have a question. So I put him, I'm going to put him uh, on a table in my living room. So I'm pretty close to the ground, but okay. I, like when I tried to do this on my own without your help, he just yeah. wanted to bolt away, right? Okay. So how do you keep them? I know you have those special- Yeah, we things, have like a little- I don't have that in my living room. Um, if you have like a chair or something maybe that you can put beside where you're going to put him and then even if you just left like his regular leash or something that you can attach him to the oh chair. Oh my god, I can totally do that. Be okay. right I know we were actually talking about this the other day and I'm like, Abby, what are they going to use for grooming loops? And she's like, their leash and collar? I'm like, oh my god, so genius, so easy. <laughs> and obviously if you have a big dog, you can just do it on the floor if you want. Yeah. Although if you find it, it's 
tends to be a little bit easier if you have them up on something because they're a little bit out of their comfort zone. They're less likely to move around. So if you have like a little coffee table or something, then that tends to be a little bit easier at home. You've got to add the extra step. You got to catch your dog. Yes. <laughs> That's the next one. So I'll put on his thing then? Yeah. Yep. To tie it around. Or yeah. should I just tie him around the leash? It's up to you. Whatever you think. You can, you can always move it later when you get to his neck. That's true. Yeah. We don't want to we'll just do this. And generally, you only really have to move it for a second just to do that spot, and then you can put them back on it, so. Right. Okay. This is his little submission lease from when he was a puppy anyway training. Okay. So, he'll be good. Hey, buddy, you ready for this? He's like, no. You can't see that through the... Look at his bangs. He is ready. Yeah. He is ready. He is so... I've never seen him that fluffy. You take him so regularly, Allison. Oh, yeah, I know he's, um, yeah, he's looking and I tried to do it. So you'll notice he's a little uneven. That's hey, okay. buddy, you couldn't even see through your eyes. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, we don't want um, anyone grooming from home. Just like focus on just keeping your dog comfortable. Do not be embarrassed to bring them in with horrible home haircuts. Just do what you can and we'll fix it. Um, it's all about just making sure they're not heavily matted and having that pulling at their skin while they're waiting to have a groom. Yeah. yeah. And you know what I noticed, like his, uh, his tail looks ridiculous, but his bum is like, you know, we got to get it all cleaned up so that he's healthy yeah. and clean. For sure. Um, yeah. I'm bathing him quite a bit. So uh, no sanitary cleanup. Um, before we did this call, we asked everyone sort of what topics they'd like to see covered and sanitary cleanup is something that people are very concerned about. Um, yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. Definitely. Okay. Okay. We are, your your okay um so because you're using a little bit of a longer blade as opposed to just like a straight up buzz down you will first want to just go over him with the brush um if you notice that he's got any little knots or anything like that just sort of if there's any areas that you feel are a little bit knotted because if there's any knots in his hair then that blade is going to catch on them and it'll just make it all chunky and it will be very frustrating for you <laughs> all righty so I know he behaves very well for you when you do this, right? <laughs> yes. Or is he like this at the salon? Oh, no, he's, he's really good at the salon. What's that? He's very good at the salon. Oh, is he? Okay, well, honey, do not make me look like you're not a good, well-behaved dog here. I'm just going to pull up his bum. Yeah. Don't mean to touch you, buddy. <laughs> okay. Why am I here? But see, this is the thing. He respects you. He's like, Mama, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, hey, hey. Honey, you're fine. I know. Okay, good job. Good job. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to keep this. Oh, yeah, your tail is naughty. Yeah. <laughs> the tail is always the, the tail and the ears are always. The main well, and it's so tail. funny because the tail, like, I don't love a foo foo tail, as you probably know. Yeah. It's just been washed. So that makes me feel better doing this. Otherwise, I think I might be really gross. Oh, look, we have a, we have a mat. Okay. Okay, so um, is that where I should use that little blady one or no? You can if you like, but his hair is like relatively easy to brush out, I find. So you can use that to break it up a little bit and then just use your brush that you had before to kind of run over it quickly. Okay. It's, it's really similar to brushing out your own hair, honestly. Right. Yeah, it does feel that way. Yeah, like hold it, hold the hair as close to the skin as you can so you're not pulling it. Oh, and then right. just work at it slowly. It's not... It's too crazy or anything. And so now, am I going to hurt him? Sorry. With that? Um, am I, I hurting my brush? No, because it's like us getting our hair brushed, right? Yes. Exactly. Well, it's like, it's like if you had like a big knot in your hair and you're like slowly trying to brush it out. We do okay, have so. customers asking us to brush out their entire body and that would definitely hurt them. It's yeah. not comfortable for them. But because Winston just has a couple mats, yeah. then it's okay to brush it out. Um, okay. if people at home, you know, they have a dog that's really got a lot of big mats. Um, Abby, maybe you could talk a little bit about spot shaving before they shave down, you know, at a shorter length. Sure. Yeah. If you wanted to do a longer length and, um, your dog does have a few little mats here and there that are just too difficult to brush out, or let's say if it's got mats like on its legs or something, um, but you want to keep the longer length as opposed to go going short everywhere then what we'll sometimes do at the store is just spot shave those little mats before we do the longer haircut. 
Um, so once again, I would recommend using like a seven blade for those mats. That's kind of the safest blade to go underneath matting. And you just kind of zip out those little spots. And then once there's no mats on the dog, then you can do the rest of your haircut. You're okay. Oh, I know it's tough. <laughs> it's so tough getting groomed. I'd like to be at a spa right now. I just want to <laughs> suggest I'd be up for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what about like, there's probably no mats in his chest, right? Probably not. The usual spots are um, any kind of like friction areas. So if your dog wears a collar all the time, then sometimes around their neck, they'll have some matting. Um, a lot of times, like anywhere that you pet them a lot. So on their head, by their ears, uh, the tail tends to get a little knotted usually. And then sometimes their feet or like the bottoms of their legs just from them walking on the, in like the grass and that sort of thing. So, okay. or if they're wearing a harness, then sometimes the chest can get matted. So it really depends on the individual dog. Um, for the most part, if you're just feeling it over. And like I said before, when you're drawing your dog, you can, it's a little bit easier to see down to the skin. Yeah. You can take a look okay. all over as well. All right. I think I have that big one out. Okay. And if not, when we get to that spot, we will. Yeah. You can always, if you, you're uh, grooming and you find that there's another little mat anywhere, then you can always just continue brushing. Okay, buddy. We're good. Okay. So are you ready to start doing the clip down for him? Yeah. Okay. So you can get your uh, clipper and you all ideally want to go with the flow of the coat. So that generally means from like their head to their bum and from the top to the bottom. And so do, the you way that it, do you pull it towards you? Like, so should I go from the top to the, yeah. top and I should be behind him then? Um, you can move him around. You can go wherever you like. Whatever is easier for you for holding your Sorry, sweetheart. Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you want to go with the, be, you'd be the doing way that the coat shaves, not one necessarily. Is that right, Abby? Well, ideally, you want to do like one long, one long one, one long one if you can. Just it just makes it a little e more okay. even. Does this scare them? It depends on the dog. <laughs> Usually not him. You're totally fine, Betty. I love you, and you're fine. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> I'm just doing his body to his thing. Yep. Yeah. So his body, um, like exactly where you started, like kind of the back of the ears, and then just go down his entire back. Um, you can kind of run down his legs a little bit. It doesn't feel like he's really um, getting a lot off. Okay. So you can um, use one of your attachments if you wanted to try. You just got to switch your blade again. Okay. Should I? So you're going to have to switch your blade to your 10 before you put that Is on. Is there a chance that maybe she wasn't holding it all the way down? Yeah, those don't fit on this. Yeah, you have to switch your blade first. because it. Won't oh, you switch it first? Time. Okay, well, let's see if I was even doing it right. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, honey. Like, what's that? Was I doing it right? Yep. Oh yeah, now it was working. It's taking time? Okay, cool. So can I hurt him with this in this this particular spot? Is it like pretty safety? Eh? Very unlikely. Very unlikely. The back and the legs are like you generally there's no chance of injury. Um it's usually it's just, just those little eight. it's usually just those little spots like the the little flaps basically. Okay. And if you can, it'll make it a little easier if you are able to keep the blade flat to his skin. So like if this is his back, you want to keep it like this as opposed oh, to- Oh, like I don't this. think I'm doing that. Oh, he's looking at me like you're not. <laughs> okay. Come here, honey. Because that'll look keep at, it- Look as at easy. Abby. Where's Abby? Winston. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Yeah. Now I can there see. That's better. Oh my goodness, honey. I'm going to get the hang of this. <laughs> oh, now's not the time to do that. <laughs> I bought this clipper yesterday because my old one broke. Yep. It's very good. It's a From Renz? Did you go to Renz to grab it? 
the Where back. did you get the clipper from? I went to uh, Ren's Pet. I love Ren's. They are so great to us there. Oh my gosh, they're so great. And they've got curbside pickup. And uh, the other place I love is uh, Global Pet Store. So I got all those treats. Oh yeah, um, um, the one on Wellington and- uh, Yeah, they're awesome. Oh, this is working so well. This is good. See, I feel pretty safe doing this. Yeah, yeah. The the three um, blade, like most of the blades are pretty safe. Um, you only really run into issues when you use like the super short blades, like the really, really, really short, um, like the kind that they use at the vet to like do IVs and stuff because those right. are so close to the skin that it's just a lot easier to get the skin caught in the blade. But for the most part, like most of the blades are pretty safe. Um, if you're using an attachment to make it a little longer, then that's even more so because the blade's not even touching the skin. So, okay, generally so, you should be fine. I've done his main part. Okay. Which uh, I know you can't really see. Oh, I gotta that's do this side still. Um, but now you want me to do down the legs. Yep, you can and do, do, I down do the head now. Tight of the legs. What's that? Okay. Yeah, down the outsides of the legs. Um, once again, just following the way that the hair grows. So just from the top to the bottom. Um, if you end up, if you accidentally go in reverse, you'll just. Well, uh, it's hard to hear you when this is on. What's oh, that? sure. Um, so you want to always go with the direction of the coat. So from the top of his body to the bottom. So when you're going down the leg, just from top to bottom. If okay. you do go in reverse, it'll just be a patch of really short hair. <laughs> basically because okay. it'll not just a good be idea. a shorter length yeah yeah okay you're doing great Winston thanks buddy for being a good sport with this little experiment It kind of gets hot, eh? Yeah, yeah. If you, the blade that you're using is okay, but if you are um, shaving your dog, like if your dog's matted and you're using a seven, ideally you want either a couple blades that you can switch out or you might have to um, take breaks in between because the blades do heat up as you're going, especially if you're trying to cut through mats, so it'll heat them up a little bit more. How often? So, um, they well, cool down pretty quickly. So you only really need like a couple minutes in between, but okay. you just want to make sure. The best thing that we usually do is um, if you take your clipper and just put it like on your arm, if it's really hot on your skin, then stop using it for a bit. <laughs> Am I doing okay, Addy? Yeah, so far so good. You're doing awesome. Like yeah. my dog will be off the table by now. <laughs> Under the bed, I don't know where. You're killing it, Allison. Amazing. So no, Abby, do you have any tips um, for people that might have a dog that's not quite as cooperative? Um, well, like I said before, if you have something that you can put them up onto, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, so if you have a smaller dog, you can put them up on like your washing machine or something like that, where it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit too high, so they probably won't jump down. <laughs> but once again, like obviously secure them if you can, you know, even if you have their leash and collar, you can tie them to like something on the wall or a chair. Um, 
you can also, if you have somebody else with you, who can maybe distract them with like treats and that sort of thing. Well, on you. Sorry, oh. I think the internet's just wonky. That's okay. <laughs> So yeah, like you were saying, um, someone else distracting them with treats. Yeah. Great tip. Same with if you're doing their nails at home. Same thing. Um, not peanut not. butter on your forehead? No, ideally <laughs> not. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could use peanut butter, but like somebody else holding it maybe while you're doing their nails. Um, although peanut butter on the wall of your shower works pretty well if you're trying to wash your dog at home because <laughs> that distracts them a little bit so, Great <laughs> so uh, i wish well, that's good up top <laughs> perfect yeah uh, the sides are a little wonky can you see this i don't know how well it's the camera's pointed let's point the camera down a little bit more okay like it's a little bit a bit longer there yeah yeah but you know what? I can I can fix him up later, and we'll just fast okay. forward through um, the adventures of getting his hair down. But he's good. Okay. okay, so I did that, but I didn't know how to get under the legs. Under the legs. Okay, so for their front legs, you can just lift them up, like facing them. Um, I'll see if I can get one of my dogs to demonstrate down here, like this. Just sort of lift up their legs. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. And then you can. Use your clipper on the inside here. <laughs> and then you can use your clipper on the inside of the leg. Um, but once again, be careful with the armpit. Like there's a little flop of skin there usually. So you just want to be so Abby, on. I may leave that for you guys. Sorry? I may leave that for you guys later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You might be walking around with arm hair <laughs> hanging <Okay>. out. <laughs> Abby, so on the legs. Yeah. Um, would you then shave towards the paw or towards the body? Towards the paw. Yeah. Always with the direction of the hair. Um, if you go the other way, it'll just be really oh, short. We're getting um, so, I mean, it's not going to like totally mess up what you're doing if you go in reverse, but it'll just be shorter wherever you go. You'll end up, if you're sort of going all over, you'll end up with different lengths and it yeah, won't be like even. patchiness. Okay. That's so, okay. <laughs> okay. So show me again. So I do one leg at a time. Yeah. I pick it up like this, and then how do you see his head is in the way? Honey, look up. How do I yeah, get I under there? I guess I just move come his head under like this. Do it a few times, but you kind of have to go around where he's. Okay, honey. Yeah, I think something that's interesting about dog grooming that a lot of people don't realize, a lot of people kind of equate it very close, but there's such a huge component of animal handling. And yeah. That's not the actual haircut, but just moving with the dog. And oh, that's good. Yeah, stand like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just kind of have to go with how the dog is. You look out of the way, honey. <laughs> Especially yeah. if it's like an old dog or something like that. You just kind of have to, or if it's a dog that like needs to sit down frequently or something, you kind of no. have to just go with the flow. Since you brought up older dogs, are yeah. there dogs that you would not They're recommend? That good boy. Good maybe call the vet for interim emergency grooms if it's needed? Um, I mean, any dog that's like severely matted, I wouldn't try to do that at home if you're not experienced. So definitely go to your vet if your dog is like just crazy matted and you can't handle it. Um, if your dog has issues with like stress and that sort of thing, so if they have stress related, you know, heart problems or something like that, and they're going to be really freaked out by you doing this at home, then I probably wouldn't do it either. So. And what about I'm older dogs? Better, I'm not sure. Older dogs, it's uh, it depends on the dog. Dog? Yeah, like some older dogs are completely fine with being groomed, and others you're, you have to be really careful. So, just it depends on your dog. Yeah, because we've definitely got in, uh, as you know, Abby, the yeah. messages re recently that people are extremely distressed. The dogs were in pretty bad condition, and yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think it's important for people to know that grooming can cause, you know, physical problems that are an emergency and that it is okay to call their vet um, yeah, sure. to just to take care of that right away. We can always make the haircut more beautiful once it grows back a bit. Yeah. But um, I think some people, they just because they're equating it so much just to hairdressing, they feel badly yeah. to call their vet if it's very extreme, but they absolutely okay. can. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. It's, Thank it can you. definitely, um, like you said, it can, I mean, it's, 
some dogs really enjoy grooming, honestly. A lot of dogs tolerate it, but they're like not really a fan of it. A fan of it. So some dogs, it really does cause a lot of stress because what's that, Allison? Sorry. Am I still? Oh, there I was frozen for a bit. Okay. I was like still. Okay. So <laughs> I think we're good with the body. We can move on from that. I okay. still have a couple questions. So okay. I didn't quite understand, and I just ended up going underneath okay. from the front. Yep. But. Are you, are you going to teach me how to get under here? Um, yeah, if you want, like on the stomach or the sanitary? Both. Yeah, we'll do the sanitary in the next step. Um, for the stomach, you can do a little bit from the sides, kind of coming around and down, like with your normal clipper that you've been using. You can also use one hand to lift up both of his front legs, so he's kind of standing up like this, and then go from the, from the chest down, like you said. Now, I mean, what about larger dogs? How, obviously, you know, you wouldn't be necessarily holding a doodle or a standard poodle up like that. How would you get at their stomachs? Um, those ones, it's actually a little easier because usually their legs are a lot longer. So if you're doing it on the floor, you can sit down on the floor and just kind of like go underneath sort of thing. Or if they're up on a table, it like just duck down a bit and you can. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that'll be better. Okay, perfect. Um, so were you, are you doing his sides or his legs right now? I did. I went into his side, so I just okay. kind of went down with the grain. Yep. You can see I'm not doing a great job, but I'm trying not to hit it. I don't want him to get neck. Right, yeah. So For the most part, um, I mean, when we do the sanitary stuff, we'll do that separately. So you don't have to go too crazy or whatever around okay. there. Perfect. So I think it's good enough. I mean, this okay. is... This is a COVID quaff, honey, buddy. <laughs> like, I have to say something inappropriate. Like, I would be so worried about accidentally circumcising my dog and going under there in the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to, we'll go and keep you safe, honey. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> All um, right. So for his back legs, you've done the outsides of them already? Yep. So for the insides of them, um, just have them stand up and then you can kind of lift up one of his legs and go from the inside, if that makes okay. sense. Good. Listen, you know Abby's voice. You're <laughs> like, that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so I come from this side. So have him kind of uh, sideways to you so that you're looking at his side. I'm go like this. And then you can lift up his back leg there. And now you can, and you can hold his tail with the same hand as well, so it's out of the way. And now you can clip her down the inside of the leg that's on the ground still. Gotcha. Perfect. Sorry, Betty. You're fine. <laughs> Perfect. So um, if you want to, if you want to do like his neck and whatnot, does he still have his collar on? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you can take that off now if you like. Um, and then you can, if you wanted to do, leave his head a little bit longer, you can start from kind of just behind his ears. Or right. if you want to, you can start on the top of his head and just go back from there. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you in terms of um, how you want his head to look. And same thing going with the grain. So yeah, exactly. And then for his neck and his throat, um, because he has longer ears, it's a little easier. You can kind of like pretend that these are my ears. You can kind of tuck them underneath and hold his head up like this so his ears are out of the way. And then you can go down on his neck like this. Okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> he has like built-in little handles. So. Oh my God, all these little tricks. <laughs> tricks to the trade. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and if your dog does have shorter ears, you can, if they have like a beard, you can just kind of hold their beard. Like that's what we do at the salon. So if they're used to being groomed, then they're generally used to having their little face held. 
Um, so you can just hold their beard to move their face around. <clears throat> Want to get rid of this little cloth here. Okay. okay, perfect. So for the most part, it looks like you're generally done like the clipper part, so his body. Um, so we'll move on to doing kind of this detail work and like the sanitary and that sort of thing. And then we'll do his face and then just go over like smaller details. Okay. So um, for the sanitary, you want to switch your blade to your 10 blade that you have. Okay. And for sanitary in general, um, any kind of like sensitive area, the 10 is the safest blade for that. So I wouldn't recommend using anything longer or anything shorter. Okay, and so part of that is just, um, like, this won't hurt him. Like, there, there's protection on these, right? It's more so just the length or, like, the distance in between the pieces on the blade. So the 10 is just the safest in terms of, if it's shorter, it's a little bit easier to, like, catch anything. Um, and if it's longer, then there's wider spaces between the... Um, like the blade part, so you can catch stuff there too. So yeah, the 10 is just generally the safest. Okay. And it's it's like short without being right to the skin because that can cause irritation as well. Okay. Um, okay, so for his underneath sides, what you want to do for a little guy like him, the easiest way is to hold both of his front arms up like this. Okay. So he's standing up and then you'll have like a clear view to underneath. Um, Maybe Allison, could you move to the side so we can see what you're working on when he's doing, you're doing the front? Yeah. Like, so why don't I come here, I'll come over here. Okay. And then, and I also have this camera going, so I won't okay. put my, there we go. Okay, so you can see from this for the video, but you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay, perfect. So like that? Okay. Yep, exactly. So okay. then you can just hold them up with one hand and use your other hand. So um, for clippering, like around the sanitary, if you have a boy dog, obviously you want to be careful, like a little bit more careful. Um, I would recommend going from the back to the front so that, you know, so you're not like catching anything when you're going down with your blade. Um, so you, if you, go oh wait, <laughs> if you um, picture your dog's back legs, if they were like open, like a little T. Yeah. And you want to go from like the center of where everything meets outwards. So, honey, we're getting close. <laughs> you are. Yeah. So you want to go from same thing, like with the grain of the hair. So from the top of his leg downwards, and then from like the back of his, like his back legs forward, if that makes sense. And then as far as how far you want to go, it really depends on what you personally want. Like if you like your dog's full sanitary area to be really clean. You can go as far down the legs and as far up on the stomach as you want. For so the like most part, full the, Brazilian. yeah, full Brazilian, like our, our general rule of thumb is about like maybe a third of the way up the stomach. Did you hear that grunting? <laughs> I tell you, he's not moving when this blade's moving. He's got instinct. So I can come this way. Yeah. Hey, that's nerve wracking because I don't want to hurt him, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a place that you're you want awesome. to be really careful. You're doing awesome. And so is he. He is such a good dog. Yeah, yeah he is. And he, but I also know him and he's like, WTF, mama, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but he'll get a good treat after this, won't you, honey? Yeah. Okay, let's do the other side. <laughs> great, Winston. You can, oh. another, another way to come at it is the same way that you did um, the clipper on the insides of his legs. Okay. So you can just lift up one leg and just kind of get the little details that way. But yeah, first, so like, do you off, like do his actual, like, what are we calling it? His penis. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. actually like do that? <laughs> we usually do. Um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where if you're afraid or anything or uncomfortable, like just leave it, like just do as much well, as you're comfortable with. Well, you know, he's my dog. I'm not uncomfortable with that. I just don't want to like, 
just in terms of if you're like afraid of clipping him or anything like that, just, yeah, just do what you're, you feel safest doing. Okay. Let me have a look. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not, is it, are you seeing here? No, we can't. No, but that's okay. Okay. I think that's good enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, so same thing, safety. same thing with his bum. Um, okay. Most dogs will try to sit down when you pick up their tail. So you might have to fight with him a bit. All right. Uh, the main thing to remember is just try not to touch his actual skin with the blade because it can, just because it's vibrating and whatnot, it can cause irritation on their bum. That's why a lot of dogs like scoot after they go to the groomers. Okay. Um, so you want to kind of go like, you can kind of skim over it like from the top to the bottom or to from the side to side, but ideally don't go like directly against his bum. Okay. And do I do like the inside of the tail as well? You can do a little bit if you want. Yeah. Um, some people like to have that a little cleaner. So it's yeah. up to you. You know, how are dogs doing right now with their, um, okay, honey, actually here, I'll ask you after, do not move. <laughs> Good boy. So you guys get it so clean, honey, you got it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, it's like everything, like we do it literally like eight to 10 times a day. So it just practice. Yeah, come here, honey, I think you've got, see, and this is the problem. No, honey, I know it's not comfortable, nobody, yeah, come on. Um, because the thing is, is that when he's going to the bathroom, right, it's getting caught. Like I know yeah. that sounds gross, but this is important for the health, right? For sure, yeah. And so this is what prompted me to desperately need help. Yeah. You know and I think a lot of other people are in the same boat. Um, I know I'm just going to our Instagram account right now because we recently, um, you know, even had, you know, a client that had to rush her dog to the vet because they thought it was constipated, but it was actually a giant mat over its butt. So yeah, it can cause that at the store. Yeah, it can definitely cause complications and it, you know, sanitary area is one of the more urgent parts of the dog or dog's body that does benefit from regular grooming. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, you know, it's easy for us to take this for granted, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's why we desperately need you guys. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to come up this way. Yep, you can do that too. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, you can come at it anyway, as long as um, hey, you're hey. trying not to touch it. Like, no. it, it happens because they move around, but it just minimizes the chance for um, irritation if you're not touching his skin around his bum. Okay. I well, know, I'm honey. Even, it's not it's my not favorite thing to do either. Are you, like, hovering over it with the blade instead of putting it on the way you did for the rest yeah. of the body? Yeah, kind of hovering like just a little bit. Um, and with a number 10, it's, flat down. It's, yeah, like a number 10 blade is relatively short anyway. So you're going to, even if you're hovering a bit, it's still going to cut off any like long hairs. So what right. do you think? Is that good enough? It's yeah. I mean, I can't really see that well, but if you think it, it looks good, then he's holding up his tail. He's like, I'm not liking that. Oh, I'm touching. Yeah, honestly, most dogs are not fond of this part of it. So it's okay. not just him. We did this. We okay. Did perfect. You look a little funny, but you know, okay. So now we do the pause. Yeah. The pause and nails. Um, you can either do the nails before the paw stuff or you can do it after it's up to you usually i do kind of do them at the same time because you're there anyway okay so this is the thing right like this is the scary part yeah a lot of people are freaked out by the nails um, but i remember you... once somebody told me the quick is a long way away from the heart like the dog is not going to bleed to death yeah they're not going to bleed to death the quicks they actually bleed more than you would think so some people even if they quick their dog a little bit it looks way worse than it actually is um, a lot of dogs, even if you quick them, literally will not respond. Like they won't react at all because they just don't care at all. So I think a lot of times people are a little more freaked out than they need to be about it. And is um, there a way to see the quick? Yeah. I mean, did you watch our video? That's the, um, the nail trimming tutorial. 
I did not, but I've heard about this video. Okay. So, uh, so I have like a little diagram that I put, put in that video that kind of shows the, the way that the nail is made up. So generally it's made up of layers. So the quick is just the blood supply that's in the inside. And then I wonder, I don't think I have it on my phone, so I can't really show you, but um, so the quick is on the inside and then that's surrounded by kind of like a membrane sort of thing that just contains it. Okay. And then around that is a chalky white layer that's just like powdery sort of stuff. And then around that is the outside part of the nail. So when you're trimming the nail, um, usually I always recommend just taking off a little bit at a time because like you're, you're not gonna, that's the safest way to do it really if you're a little uncomfortable with it. Okay. As opposed but to just kind of chop off a cage piece. With would, it be, would it be easier to clean these out? Because they're so long hair. Look at that yeah, hair. You can, you can do that first if you like. I think so because I can't even find the nails. Okay. <laughs> well, and can we do the nails at the end of the video? Because since we yeah. do have the nail tutorial, we could maybe refer people to that for the nails. And then okay, yeah. have that's a good idea. Yeah. Part in this video. And yeah, then okay. can stay on to help Allison, but then that way it's not yeah. in this okay. content. Awesome. Okay, so how do I clean the paws? Um, so same thing, the 10 blade that you have on there is what okay. we use. Um, and essentially, uh, you basically just want to hold the paw like upside down, like how you had it before, and just skim across the top of it and get all that stuff out. Um, you don't necessarily want to like dig into the, into the paw pad that much. Okay. Because there's a, a higher chance of uh, like nicking them and dogs kind of it kind of protects their feet anyway to have a little bit of hair in there oh, wow there's a lot of hair here yeah <laughs> hmm. i didn't expect there to be that much hair yeah a lot of dogs um i don't know why their their paw hair grows really fast yeah honey you've got crazy man hair it's like a, a old man with um you know, nose hair is growing out. I think yeah, your, exactly. your paw hair is getting a little old manny. So maybe it's not perfect. Sorry if you got down my top there. That's okay. Um, so maybe it's not perfect? Yeah, that's fine. As long as for the most part, it's relatively cleaned up. It's all good. Okay. And then the front paws, how do I do those? Um, you can kind of, like, have you ever, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, if, if you've ever um, cleaned out a horse's hoop, it's kind of similar. I think it's good enough. Perfect. Um, so do you have a pair of scissors with you? I do. Okay. Um, so for their paws, um, generally in terms of like rounding and trimming off the extra hair on their paws, what I like to do, because it makes it a little easier, is with their paws still on the, on the ground, so or this is their paw on the table, if you just take your scissor, rest it against the table, and just like this all the way around, Okay. You can kind of um, get it relatively even and cut off all the extra hair that's hanging off. Okay, good job. No, no, I want you to leave your paw down this time, honey. Thanks for the kisses. <laughs> you can lift it as well if it's a little easier. Um, just with the scissors, it's, once again, the paws are one of those areas that are a little bit more sensitive. Um, a lot of dogs don't like having their paws held, especially the front ones, so sometimes they'll fight you for it. I kind of wonder that about Winston. I'm like, why don't you like your paws? Like, I like yeah, my I, hand held. A lot of dogs are not fond of it. Sometimes they kind of see them as their tools, I guess. So, because, you know, they walk and they, they dig and stuff like that with their front paws. Right. So maybe I'm invading your space, eh, honey? Yeah. <laughs> your, your little, you think those are your, 
your independence. Okay, we'll see how that. Oh, that looks good. Oh, look, he lifted the other one for me. Oh my God, you're so good. You're so good, honey. You know, there's going to be people watching this, trying to do their dog, and we've got Winston there, like, lifting his little paws, standing <laughs> still, and it's like, oh, guys, look how easy this is. You can totally do it at home. Yeah. And their dog's like, boom. I mean, I tried to trim Billy's nails, and Abby knows how awesome my dog is for nails. Yeah. And so I waited until Peter was coming to visit Dylan and he did it for me and I had to like have her in a body lock while yeah. he was taking off little bits you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know I always laugh because Winston makes such a stink when I drop him off to you guys right and then yeah. most dogs do when their parent is still there and right. then once and then you're gone they're totally fine, fine. Yeah. and you know what else <laughs> he did as I do the back pause uh, so Winston is so afraid of thunderstorms and one day he was at your place and a thunderstorm vicious came out into the into the world and I was so nervous I was like oh my god my poor Winston he's gonna be like so freaked out and they're gonna be like dealing with this dog anyway I get there he's in the window like as if the world it just watches the storm like everything's <laughs> fine I'm like do you know what the sleepless nights I have had <laughs> and you don't even care when I'm not there to baby you yeah you yeah. wake up and he's like shaking on you but he's been caught he's been caught the jig is oh, up and then. I remind him of that in the middle of the night <laughs> oh yeah this is good I mean, this is not going to look like a friendly groomer cut. I got to tell you. That's okay. Uh, you don't have to get fancy. But I'm going to feel better knowing he's safe, right? Yes, exactly. And that he's cleaned up and comfortable. Yeah, and he's not getting matted and then we have to shave him down. Or, But, you know, <laughs> in fairness, after this cut, we might want to. But, you know, what <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to do a friendly groomer cut. You'll put me out of business, Allison. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> you are going to be... Anxious to get in to see you guys. Yeah, no, we have been getting a ton of just messages and dogs are really hitting that point. Unfortunately, when um, COVID sort of all the so social distancing stuff started was right around when we get our spring rush for dogs to get cleaned up from the winter. So we definitely have some clients that, you know, it's been since Christmas and um, so right. pretty worried. Well, and you know, the other thing is people got to be thinking, I picked up today my um, uh, bravado, you know, the, uh, his flea stuff mm -hmm. or like the ticks, flea and ticks. Brevecto, yeah. Yeah, Brevecto, that's it. Yeah. Um, because I guess it's time to get started on that as the warmer weather comes too, right? Yep. yep. Look at us just helping people when they're doggies. <laughs> okay. What's next? Um, so we'll do his face. All right. Hi, honey. Thanks. Um, so your scissors that you have are actually a really good length for him because he's a smaller guy. So like I said before, ideally, if you don't have a choice, then you don't have a choice. But um, ideally, like a shorter pair of scissors like that for their face. So you're not using this like crazy huge machete, basically. Okay. Um, so the main things on their face on a, a dog like him is the stuff that grows up just in front of their eyes. Okay. And then their bangs that hang down. <laughs> So you said that you've already trimmed his bangs a little bit. You can do as much as you like, really. Uh, the main safety thing that I would say is obviously don't aim your scissors like at an eyeball, ideally. <laughs> it's all fun and games till somebody loses an eye. Yeah. So have the point of your scissors facing away from the dog as much as you can. And then other than that, um, it's honestly difficult to, as long as you have the point of the scissors aimed away and you're keeping track of when you're closing your scissors and that there's no like tongues or anything in the way. Right. And you should be pretty good on their face. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if I can, I don't have long haired dogs, so I can't even really show you, but. Right. So when I we can... look at his face. Yes. His little noodles doodle. Hi, honey. Okay, look at Abby. Where's Abby? Winston. Look for her voice. Winston. Boop. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. Say hi to Abby. Okay. So, so when I do so this. Yeah, so you want to hold his chin to keep his head as still as you can. Um, he's used to it, so he should let you do that. Right. Um, 
basically we do that just as a safety thing so that they're not moving their head around constantly while you're trying to scissor their face. Okay. Um, so just keeping his chin held, kind of facing you, and then you can kind of work on his face. And do you, do you have a recommendation, like how short do you go? Like I like not too frou-frou, but not too short, you know? Yeah, it, it, like, it depends on what you're looking for. So it's really a crap him, shooting. Yeah, for him, um, you can just kind of trim until you think it's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, for the stuff in between their, or in front of their eyes, I can kind of show you on myself, I guess. If you have your scissors, um, you kind of want to have them like on this angle. So kind of like this, like facing upwards. So the point of your scissors is facing away from your dog. And then you can just trim like this. And then same thing on this side. Trim like that. Does that make sense? <laughs> Come on, Bubby. You got a lot of little nicknames, don't you? Life is good. Okay, and what about their whiskers? Is it okay to cut their whiskers as I cut his whiskers? Yeah, you can cut his whiskers. It's not gonna bother him or anything. They'll grow back as well. <clears throat> okay. He's gonna, I don't know, I don't wanna make this too short, his little Fu Man chew, but I don't wanna make it too fooey. Yeah, I mean, you can even just take off a little bit along the edges um, just to bring down the length a little bit. You don't necessarily have to go like super close to his mouth or anything. And once again, the lips and the mouth is a danger zone. Yeah, so he has a lot of hair in his, um, like he's eating his hair. Let's pull okay, that yeah. hair. Key, honey. <laughs> no, stop flicking it back in. Okay, hold on. Meow. Okay, so I um, if you have a comb as well, that can help a lot for their face for doing a beard. If you use your comb to kind of like go down from the nose to the side, that'll pull all that hair out of his mouth if he has anything in there and then you can um just trim it off so okay actually let me ask you as my goal to get rid of this lip hair um i mean i would be a little careful with it i guess at home because okay. they a lot of times they tend to lick when you're doing anything with their face like that right like he's trying to do now okay yeah so even if you just take off some of that mustache stuff along the side um that that will probably be fine this is good this is good no, Abby, um, just to reiterate, so for people that they, they don't want to get into this, they can just shave their face, correct? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can so shave what their face. direction would you go, like, I know you're saying with the hair, but it's hard, like, for me to figure out what direction the hair is going in a dog is, I mean, for you, you look at it and you know. But. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, for their body, the hair is going to grow, like, from their head back and then from the top of their body down to the floor. On their face generally it's like from their nose down like the way that a beard would look or whatever and same with their head for the most part it goes down some dogs have like weird calyx and stuff here and there but for a dog like winston it's going to be from like the top of the nose down so if you are using a clipper to shave them you want to you would want to start um like at the top of their nose and kind of go down the side of their muzzle like follow the shape of their face and then you know from the sides down like this and so is Winston a Shih Tzu or is he a mix? He's a Shih Tzu Poodle. Shih Tzu Poodle. Okay, so we definitely have a lot of clients that do have the dogs with those slightly curlier coats. So. Yeah, Winston has a bit of a straighter coat, I would say, like compared to some of the ones that we have that have the curlier ones. Um, but he doesn't have as straight a coat as like a full Shih Tzu. Right. And so he's a little fluffier. I think that's pretty good. And one side is always easier too far. <laughs> What's that? One side is always easier than the other. So you'll do one side and think like, yeah, this is great. And then you have to do the other side as well. Yeah, I always feel like I might do this. Let's mess you up. Yar, you got COVID. Okay, now I got to see if I pull it back down if it's nice together. And um, again, if you use your comb, it'll just pull out any weird pieces. Um, yeah, so but except I don't really it. have a comb. I only have the brush. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can use that too. It's just, it'll pull out any kind of like weird pieces that he had in his mouth or anything, like any long bits that are sticking in there. in there. So, Abby, is there a difference? Like if someone was grooming um, a dog that's coat was curlier or one that was straighter, yeah. what, are there differences to the clipper or technique for the purposes of just doing a quick home groom or? Not really. Um <laughs> With this right. straight hair, it's, it tends to be, um, sometimes the length 
will look a little bit longer than what you are expecting because their coat is kind of lying flat. Whereas if you have a poodle or something that's coat is, is uh, curly, but then when you bathe and dry it, it's a little straighter. It can tend to be, um, it'll look like exactly like the length that you're trying to do. So on a dog like Winston or a Shih Tzu that has like the flat coat that's lying down or a Yorkie, that kind of thing. If you are doing the length that Allison's doing here, it might look a little bit longer or it might look like there's pieces that are a bit longer just because of how the dog's coat hangs on his body, I guess. Well, and I know I always hear the groomers saying that with the straighter the coat, sort of the less forgiving it is to the cut. So yeah. I guess if people are doing it at home and they do have a Yorkie or a straighter uh, hair dog, um, all the power to you. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, it'll probably look a little choppy, but. <laughs> getting it is even. Yeah. The people with the super curly coats might have a little easier just in the sense of. Yeah, the really curly coats are a little bit easier to make them look even. Um, yeah, the straight yeah. hair is. You know, like and the thing is, is like, they don't know what they look like, but they do know when they're having a bad haircut. Yeah, because like, they, know, they know how people react to them. Yeah, before we had the friendly groomer, uh, I would pick him up, and I remember <laughs> he was so short, he looks like a rat when he's too short, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was, like, he was literally tail between his legs for, like, three uh, days. Yeah. It was actually really cute. Too. If he, if he wasn't used to having really short hair, sometimes they can feel a little strained afterwards. So. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's good for the face. I'm only taking okay. a little bit off. What about the ears? Um, the ears, I know that you like to kind of have like the triangle sort of look for him. So um, when you're, you want to make sure they're fully brushed out, first of all. Okay. And then um, if you're trimming anything on their ear, just make sure you're using your other hand to feel where the edge of their actual ear is before you cut anything, because obviously you don't want to cut your dog's ear, <laughs> ideally. Um, so even if they have like a super long ear, just make sure you're running your finger along where their actual like ear leather is underneath the hair, just so that you have a guideline when you're cutting. I and see. for him, <laughs> I would probably yes. block the scissors like yeah you can kind of block them yeah so i would keep yeah keep his ear hanging down and then um use your one hand as a guideline and then you can kind of trim off however much you want with your because i have definitely nicked billy while shaving do, like billy gets a very short cut and i've definitely nicked her shaving or trying to do her ears she's not winston i mean she is horrible even for you guys yeah. um but yeah it's just you know, it's just crazy how easily this stuff can happen, which was the whole hesitation of even doing this video and, and encouraging it. But yeah. we're definitely, like I was saying before, at the point that some dogs are in pretty bad condition since they haven't been groomed since Christmas. So, well, and I think Here that, <laughs> you know, I'm sort of doing this uh, to use the original COVID thing with an abundance of caution. Yes. So, uh, you know, like I'm not going really low like really tight you know i'm trying to be a little bit more like just enough yes exactly. i think until i can get them in to see you guys and with warmer weather i mean doing this will help to prevent the matting um with warmer weather keep them a little cooler so mm -hmm. the main thing i think reason for doing this with people at home would just be to help kind of prevent them from getting really bad mats because once it gets to a certain length the upkeep just it's is too much yeah very it's too much to maintain at home yeah um, so you're right. One side is much better than the other because in order to do a triangle on this side, I got to go with the opposite hand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to complain about his ears being uh, uneven again, you know. <laughs> you know to be a groomer, you must be ambidextrous. <laughs> oh my God. I don't get into really weird positions. How do you make him look so cute? Well, you twist yourself around and come at weird angles and stuff. Yeah, you know what? It could very well be an even, but I think it's pretty good. Hi. Oh, well. Okay. Now, Abby, can you also maybe go over? Um, I don't think we prepped for this, but just ear cleaning, because that was another question that we got. Um, I know for me, when I was learning to clean dogs' ears, I couldn't believe how far in you're supposed to stick the cotton ball. I was thinking about people where you always hear that, you know, you'll yeah. hurt your drum if you go too far, whereas dogs, it's like you feel like. Your elbow deep yeah yeah they have like a really long ear canal um generally the rule of thumb is like if you're using a cotton ball just go in as far as feels normal like if the dog's ear 
is really shallow, then just do a little shallow bit. One of my dogs has like super huge ears that are like really wide so I can stick my whole hand in his ear basically. So um, if you have like an ear cleaner at home, that's like a vet one or one that we sell, then I would use that. Don't use just water because it won't dry. Um, the, one that we, the ones that we use have a little bit of an alcohol base, so that dries up the water after you've cleaned it. Um, but I mean, even if you're just using a straight up cotton ball, like a dry cotton ball, you can still wipe out some of that dirt that they have in there. So do they have dirt in their ear? Sometimes, yeah. Some dogs never really get it. Other dogs um, have really dirty ears. It really depends. For a littler guy like Winston, you can rip a cotton ball in half so you have like a smaller one to get in there. <clears throat> Well, and this, especially for our customers that have, um, like with, when I had Wallace, um, you know, the Springers or the Spaniels in general, uh, mm -hmm. they're so prone to ear infections that that's sort of a big part of their grooming, the advantage yeah. of having the grooming done regularly. So yeah, those for sure. definitely want to be cleaning their dog's ears at home. Listen, I think you've done a great job and I sort of messed up your face, but it's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, and you can turn up like his legs and whatnot and do whatever else you want. Or if you wanted to trim off more of his bangs, it looks it's good. more so just details, like whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. But like you said, just using the most caution possible, which just kind of doing like what you need to to make him comfortable is really ideal right now. I wouldn't go too crazy. So looks when, look, look yeah. back in the camera because I think it is pretty... Uh, Hi, Winston. <laughs> it's a little bit uneven. But you know what? I'll play with that. And okay. the thing is, now I know this, so I can kind of do a little bit at a time as I need to. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I can't wait till we're back. <laughs> back in the real world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, right now, one of our big conversations is what are we going to do to keep our staff and clients safe when we do reopen that it's not business as usual, but we're taking extra steps to keep yeah. everyone healthy. You guys are already pretty uh, far apart. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, in terms of yeah, our tables. And probably whatnot. not two meters apart. Uh, big box stores really have the groomers packed in. So we're lucky that we're not in that position. Um, but today we're even talking like, okay, if we put the crates in the center of the room, <laughs> maybe we can have everyone around the perimeter, but we're thinking of ideas and as more guidelines come out, uh, working on that. Um, but it, you know, wh what it really comes down to is, you know, us, the part of the reason for the assessment is to let the owners know, Hey, there's lots of mats. We're not going to be able to maybe go as long as you want. But I think under these circumstances, a lot of people are going to understand that, you know, your first haircut after quarantine isn't going to be your dream haircut. It's going to be the one that's going to get your dog cleaned up and feeling good um, and starting fresh in a lot of cases. Yeah. Well, Winston, you've gone from COVID quaff to COVID chic. Yeah. <laughs> quarantine hair, don't care, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I think we did everything, right? So the nails, you've got the great video. Yep, Nails, you can watch that video. It shows everything and, and yeah, that's awesome. are fine with it. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, he adjusted pretty well. I don't think he was happy doing it, but he was fine. Like I said, very few dogs like really love being groomed. For the yeah. most part, they tolerate it. And that's all we can really ask for. Yeah. So do awesome. you do like an outro? <laughs> We can, we can mash it in if it works. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Winston looks great. And thank you, Abby. And to everybody watching, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys all very soon. Um, and please, you know, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. And our groomers can be watching our social media pages um, and try to answer any questions for you. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you so much. I can't wait to be back with you guys. <laughs>